What up, what up? It's old Marvelous in the fucking Hemi. So today's topic is going to be a little different. I just want to express to y'all why I decided to give dating advice for black men. So walk with me for a while. This is going to be more of a stream of consciousness. You know, I'm going to just speak from the heart. I'm not having as, as organized as I normally do. This is just coming straight from my heart, from my soul. So it's going to be a little disjointed all over the place, but you'll get the point. Because here's the thing. Sometimes you have to go all the way left to get right. So we're going to go back and forth between, you know, left and right and wrong and right and light and dark. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we go through this video. All right. So the reason why I decide to do dating advice is this. And this is the un inconvenient truth. Most women will never be able to love you the way that you need to be loved or you desire to be loved as a man, as a black man in America. They'll love what you can provide her with. Whether that's tangible or intangible, they love what you provide them with. They love how you make them feel. They love you loving them. They love the fact that you protect their ego or feed it. But as far as who you are as a man, what makes you tick, what you're scared of, what you love, your ideals, unless they relate to her, she won't be able to love you. She can't love that part of you because that's nothing to do with her. She can't love the parts of you who, you know, the part of you that makes you you, the part of you that wakes you up in the morning, if it has nothing to do with her. And feeding her ego or protecting her ego or makes her feel a certain way. Don't believe me? Ask, ask your girl one day or ask the woman you're dating one day. What does she love about you? Nine out of ten times, nine out of ten, probably nine and a half out of ten times. It'll be something that relates to her. Oh, you're funny because now that makes her laugh. It makes her feel good. You feel me? Like you're consistent because if you're consistent, that gives her stability. But what about how you process information? What about the way your emotions flow? What about things that are independent and doesn't directly correlate to her happiness and her ego? She probably doesn't even recognize those things about you. So now, I hear a lot of dating coaches online there's a lot of great dating coaches online. I'm not about to go and talk down about another black man trying to find the truth. Cause that's why we're here. But I think a lot of times, a lot of these dating coaches, they talk about things and they diagnose things, which is great. And we need to be able to diagnose things. But I, I like to go deeper. You know, um, the statement I just made about women not being able to love you. Then a lot of people will take that and then villainize women. I actually think that the reason for this is that we've been infected. We've had our soul compromised. You know, um, the universal consciousness of black people in America. We have been stolen from our land or had our land stolen from us. There's aborigine black people in this in, in America that like myself, you know. Um, my grandparents on both sides were Native American, you know. Um, I also have people who were slaves, you know what I'm saying, my family from Africa. So I'm a prime example of somebody who was Aborigine in America. So I've had my land stolen from me, a.k.a. prisoners of war, because a lot of my ancestors were prisoners of war. They were dark-skinned Aboriginal black people. Or people of, you know, dark skinned people who were melanated. Then I also it was stolen from my land in this place. So I know it, you know what I'm saying, twofold. You look at our religion was stolen from us. We were displaced and replaced. And if you really understand the slave trade, they were people from Africa. They were brought to America. The disobedience ones were brought down to the West Indies and buck broken. That's why West Indian people have, especially Jamaicans, have such a visceral hatred for Bati boys or gay people or anything having to do with that because they were they got the shit raped out of them. 
That's why they have such a visceral hatred for, you know what I'm saying, ain't body boys or anything like that, anything having to do with gayness or anything like that, or homosexuality, because they got the shit raped out of them down there in Jamaica, in the West Indies. That's where the some of the most evil slave masters were because that was their main job to break them down there and then they were transported back up north once they were more subservient and then the ones they were transported down south some of them were shipped back to africa anyway all that to be said is that we've been separated from everything from our home from our religion from our everything from our souls you know our religion was taken from us. You have black people. We would hide our religion in capoeira. That's a dance fighting type of martial arts. We still hid our rituals and our religion within martial arts. So now we're the slave masters would see us and say, oh, they're just dancing. But no, we're practicing self-defense. And we're also keeping our rituals intact. But the thing about it is that now... Since we are separated from everything, from our history, from our lineage, from our land, from our spirituality, from even from our women. They would take our women and separate man from women. They would breed us like cattle. They would have the bed wenches that would be in the house and breastfeed their children. They would have, you know, women and those women would oversee Male slaves. Doesn't sound familiar like right now. You hear women say shit like, oh, I gotta watch him. I gotta make sure I keep him in check. It's not your job. My job is to keep you in check. They f literally have flipped and reversed the roles. And you no know, wonder why we have so many black men in America that have arrested development. Because when you take a king and a god, you turn him into a man, and then you turn him into a boy by having his mother or patriarchal figure suppress his manhood. This is what they understood. And they continue to reinforce that to this day within media. But even with all of that, we was able to, after slavery was abolished, black people had the number one, we was the highest rate of marriage in America. We had the highest rate of marriage in America at that time. Men in slavery times, they were... Jumping the broom and creating their own ceremonies and ways of getting married behind the slave masters. Watchful eye. So the whole narrative that black men ain't shit. The whole narrative that, you know, black men, you know, are bastards and they don't want to get married and all these other things is a false one. And the only way you would believe that is if one, you don't. The only way you would believe that is one, if you do not know your history and two, if the white man has truly corrupted your soul. Because I know when I hear shit, I will not accept it. I have to go do research. A lot of times, one thing I said with white people, when it comes to corporations and white people, the white consciousness, I'm not talking about one-to-one -one white people, the white consciousness, the one that wants to suppress us, if they say right, I always go left because usually left is the truth. If they say go up, I always go down because that's where the truth is at. So now, I look at things and again, where I said earlier, Here's the thing. Backtrack. So like I said, we were the highest. You know, I told you I'm going to be all over the place today. So we were one of the, we had the highest 
marriage ratio and all this niggas ain't shit narrative occurred. But let's look at when did it happen? When did it start? In the 60s. What was going on in the 50s and 60s? They forced black men out the house. They had a quote unquote war on drugs. They put drugs and guns in the community. They took all the men out the houses, but you can have a little A for weed on you. Now you got a record. Now you can't get a job. Now you can't get a job. Now, now how it's supposed to be, women are a vessel. Men fill that vessel up and then you get a return on that. They, they amplify, you know what I'm saying, what we give them. So that's the natural order of things. But then now when you take the men out the house through, you know, putting drugs in the community, now that man can't, has a little record for an eighth of weed on him or whatever the case may be. Now you take the man out the house, and you know what I'm saying? Because now he has a record. He can't get a job. And then the government comes in and says, you know what? We'll give you bread now. Here, take this money. We're your man now. And in actuality, if you have a man in the house, the government would not give you any type of, you know what I'm saying, government aid. So now what you're doing is literally, in essence, taking the soul out of the household, out of the black community. You're taking the soul out of the black community by taking the man out of the black community. And you're now introducing a fake soul, a prosthetic soul, a.k.a. government assistance. And then now what happens, what they did was they destroyed the Black Panthers. And then the Black Panthers end up creating, you know, when they disbanded, that created the Bloods and the Crips. But then they still was trying to protect us from being lynched and killed in police brutality. But then what the media did was that they created a narrative of Bloods versus Crips. And you know how that story goes. Art imitates life. Life imitates art. So now, you know, they killed Martin Luther King. They killed Malcolm X. They killed all of our leaders. They killed all of our leaders. And the ones they couldn't kill, they killed them in the court of public opinion, which is what they're doing today still. So now you have this. Now there's no men. There's nothing to look forward to. There's no men that create direction, provide guidance in the black community. And then what you think happens, and now you have a surrogate man. You have this prosthetic man, you have this fake man, which is the government, which is entities, which is corporations, which are which all we know have no souls. In America, corporations have more rights than actual people. Look at your tax returns. So now you have this soulless thing filling your woman up. Because I said it before, they are a vessel. So you have a soulless entity that doesn't give a fuck about you or them. You have corporations pumping their heads up of what they need to do. Creating the whole niggas ain't shit narrative. Putting it on TV. In commercials, social media. So how can your woman love you when she has never experienced love herself? Because love to her is coming from someone who is soulless, who doesn't understand love, or entity or corporation who doesn't, who does not love you, is using you. So of course she uses you. So now, when it comes to dating women, you have to keep all this in mind. And yes, we can diagnose these things. Like I said, a lot of dating people diagnose as a man was supposed to diagnose. But for me, I diagnose a diagnosis. Where did it come from? And let's think about who runs corporations. Who run or ran the plantations where they hurt us like cattle, where they separated us, where they forced the woman in a perverted nature in the way that masculine and feminine energy flows with each other. Who did that? Now let's look at them and their men. 
in the way they move. Let's look at them. Let's analyze that. Any person, where, where has white people created on this earth? What have they, what have they done for the benefit of this earth? What have they, you know, introduced to mankind that was beneficial for everybody other than actually nothing? They stole and plagiarized and raped and pillaged and they created genocide. But as far as culturally, their culture is all borrowed from everything. Plato stole from African scriptures and literature and philosophy. Christianity, Christianity is refurbished Egyptian spirituality. Even look at something like liquor and and all these things. A lot of these inventions were created by slaves. And because the owners own them, now they're the ones who created it. Ford, you know what I'm saying? Thomas Edison, fucking, what's this nigga name? Elvis. The list goes on. Just do your research. But they created patents and copyrights. So just because you have this on a piece of paper that gives you rights to it, no the fuck it doesn't. It's not yours. It didn't come from your soul. The universal consciousness of America is that of narcissism. These are people. And again, I'm not already explained this. Go check my other video out. Feminism is not designed for the black woman. I fully explained what narcissism is. The ins and outs, the technical aspects of, of narcissism by DSM which is the Bible for psychology, the equivalent of the Bible for psychologists. And then I also go into it from my understanding of it and give you the practical application of what a narcissist is. Think about it like this too, a corporation, like I said to you earlier, has no soul. It's like a fucking locust. All it cares about is numbers and hitting goals and things of these nature. Expand, expanding. That's why a lot of these corporations, when it get, once it gets so big and publicly traded, it literally just engulfs everything. Look at Walmart. It, create, it crushed the mom and pops. It's soulless. It becomes bigger than a man at that point in time. And now if these corporations, their only goal is to become bigger and better and to make more money and have the profits mar margins look right they don't give a fuck about people and the reason why I said a minute ago about what has white people done for the earth they are in conflict with the earth look at any aborigine aboriginal culture look at it they always believe in being in sync with the earth the Native Americans in sync with the earth. You look at the Africans always want to be in sync. Egyptians, every fucking culture until now, we're killing the planet for money. And the only reason really money is, is a thing is because we believe in it. It would have no power if we didn't believe in it. It's not even backed by gold like it used to be anymore. So now... You have these are how our the vessels, our women are being filled with the universe, with the consciousness or the lack of consciousness of a narcissist. That's why a lot of our a lot of our women are narcissistic. Because now they're men that are filling them up. Their men we're taking direction from is not us anymore. It's a corporation. It's an entity. It's the state. It's TV. And there's big business in black pain. There's big business in us not fucking with each other. It's a big business in poisoning us. That's what they did initially. They poisoned us with sheets. Then they now they're poisoning our minds and they're poisoning our spirits. There's big business in that. So, 
Like I said earlier, she can never love you. How can she?